If parts of your body tingle when you hear an engine rev. If the hair on the back of your neck stands up when you hear tires squeal. Then you've found your new home. This is the Revved Up Garage Cast. Containing more testosterone than your listening device can handle. Loud, loud, crazy, crazy, but a hell of a lot of fun. Let's do it. You're listening to the Revved Up Garage Cast. Now your hosts, Stephen, Mark, and Eddie. Okay, Revved Up Garage Cast. We are actually on track, and I know the episode number. Episode number 17. Um, we did 17 of these things already? We did 16. This, this, this was 17. 17. Okay. So, um, uh, our last episode was consistency needs to be key, and uh, it took us two weeks to get it produced and out there. <laughs> so, we're on it there. The next day we're recording. I'm going to get this one out there, 17. We're going to try and get these into weekly or bi-weekly, something we need to get a rhythm. That way we're... Talking about current events, one, and just that way people know when to tune in and when to listen. So, since the last one, um, that was right before Iron City Nationals. Um, we went to, I went to Iron City. Eddie had plans with his kid. Mark said he did something 4th of July related. I don't know we don't did. really know what he did. Probably went fishing. I had two parties. Uh, he had a party on Sunday. And Saturday. Yeah. Did you even go? Yeah. yeah. Did you get drunk? <laughs> okay, so I forgot Mark doesn't derby on the fourth of July. That's that was the one of the I almost named that the episode. Or the first day of fishing or hunting season. I mean Dead I Man guess. really took my hunting season when we ran a team show. Bad. Me and John's over there pissed. Okay. It'll be okay. So we had Iron City Nationals, um me and Mel went and vended. Uh, I ran, she ran, a bunch of MWFA cars ran. Um, funniest thing from my aspect is um, she says, hey, if anything in this car, if you need to get a hold of me, I'm wearing my iWatch, text me. So I'm looking around, this S10 pulls in, I'm sitting there bullshitting with my boy Cunningham. This S10 pulls in, his tailgate keeps falling down. So his tailgate is horizontal, straight out, and like sort of like a spear so i'm like that's sort of unsafe so um i walked the officials they walked over and they tried closing it as good as they can it wasn't closed so they just propped it up i text mel i'm like hey stay away from that s10 and not not because like i was worried about the s10 being strong or like whatever i just felt it sort of unsafe it could like spear you and i I really like it so I'm bullshitting with my boy Cunningham about getting a cage done on a razor. And uh, I didn't see she text me back, what S10? Well, there's one directly across from her, one car over, and there was one in the far corner of the track that's actually a canyon, it's newer. So if I told you to stay away from the S10 and you didn't know which one, would you go after the other one? No. <laughs> so, so first shot, and this is the hardest hit for her of the night. She's three quarters away across the track before cars are halfway, straight into the back of this S10. Stuck, <laughs> buried. While she's buried, she got her front wh- real whip to yeah front. Ooh, front wheel, wheel ripped. ripped. <laughs> front wheel ripped. Um, bent her strut, took her top right of her radiator out. And somehow she still, after that though, after she got unstuck, she drove really, really good and got out of six. Um, I think she would have been top three if she wanted to did that. And I guess it was miscommunication by saying stay away from the S10 when there's two. I mean, that's how you learn, bud. Yeah. Now, now you need to, t- next time you come into that situation, whether it just tell her the opposite of what you really wanted her to do, and maybe it'll just click in her brain to, you know. And I went out there and got beat by a girl. No second. Damn. I don't know if I was smoked. There was a, there was um, some controversy on how it finished at the end. And 
whether I agree with it or not, the officials chose the way that they did, and that's what it was. What was so controversy about it? Um, so she had lost reverse uh, when we made a hit. There were a few hits that we hit nose and nose. We were like trading back and forth. She hit me, and then I backed up. And the last hit of the actual derby, she was stopped, and I hit her probably about 30 foot, decent little front jab. We got stuck. Well, from that point on, she had no reverse. So it was back at me towards the tires, and I'm there having a flashback of like getting stuck on tires, this and that. So like I kept not going, but the officials kept making us separate. She can't move. She don't have reverse. So she can't separate. So the when I put it in reverse, she only had forward, so it pushed me backwards. I there's no, I can't go forward when she don't have. So anyways, she pushed me into the tires, but never came unstuck. I'm there rocking my car back and forth, trying to get off forward, back, forward, back. She only has forward, and that's the end of the derby. Years. Yeah. Uh, someone should have stopped that one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just wish there was a little bit more thought in the process. Um, at minimum, I think they should have tried to pull us apart if that was the case. And if they didn't, I was probably the one that made the last hit. No, you were definitely... Sound like you made the last hit. So how do you fix that situation? Uh, I, I don't know. Um... On a county fair level, I don't know that there's a fix. Maybe at these bigger derbies that they are being recorded and live streamed, maybe it is something that they need to. I mean, they look did, at. They did say at the beginning, no pin to win. Yeah, that was at the drivers meeting. There was no pin to. I mean, I went over it with the officials. It I know it's just, not. It's it was, not an intentional pin, but it was um, still a pin. I mean, Nick had, Nick had admitted that it was just sort of their yeah. mistake. But yeah, um, that's, that's the sport. I mean, it sucks. But I do believe, though, that at a national level show or oh, something yeah. that's being recorded, and that was a live look at me, so it was so easy for me to just look back at my phone and be like, yeah. right here is what happened. So he's, they say there's no instant replay in Demolition Derby, but why not? There could be. I mean, how many if people it's being got their recorded phone out? No, 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 no. I don't want to go to... Phones. Okay. I want to go to if it's being live stream as a national event, then you should be able to go back and look. Yeah, I mean, you go back, you look at Blizzard Bash. There's been times where heats got called wrong, and you see both heats advance, both teams advancing. They don't take it away from one, but they give it to the other. I remember TJ one time at um, when it was at Cumberland, they um gave the win to a guy, and they went back, and the guy that won it and made the last hit should have been timed out when it was down to two and his officials didn't time it correctly and I remember TJ sending the other guy for a peanut check I've seen it somewhere I think it was a pretty cool idea and I think it might be able to help what your situation was at the end at the end of the derby even what, no matter what it comes down to especially when guys get nose and nose nobody wants to give or back up or whatever from the promoters Ask them in the pit and have have a vote real quick. You either have to make a full car hit, length of the car, or a half car hit. Yeah. So you actually have to back up half length or full length of your car and then come back forward and make a hit. Yeah, and I was way past that. So, I mean, that would have been fine. Um, It had, uh, I'm trying to think. Man, this is a long pause right now. I cannot think of what I was going to say. Hey, you know. they say. Can't remember. Probably wasn't that important. <laughs> Maybe. I do hate when it gets down to two cars and, and nobody wants to back up this or back up that. I ain't going to lie to you. That's my biggest problem with full size. And it really is a full uh, and a full size issue most of the time. But there's, when it really comes down to it. Yeah, well, they got described it like. They had described that like nudging wasn't a hit, and when I talked to Nick after the derby and showed him the video, I was like, even if you go by nudging, and like how she pushed me into the tires because we were stuck together, he's like, no, we didn't go by nudging, but even if we did, you were rocking her after that. Mm-hmm. So it was just a it was just a blunder, I guess. Hey, if we're bringing us the replay back in, they need to look at 
Uh, no mercy. I want my Reaper award. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. But at the end of the day, got to congratulate McKenna Sailor. Yeah, no, it's not. Was, in no way is it the other no, driver's no, yeah, fault. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a huge win, especially at her age. I mean, yeah. And they, they're there with a really good machine, and honestly, uh, Mark Elliott, he got on me in his live a little bit. He says, maybe you need to get after her a little bit earlier, which I could see that being the case, but... Um, we know you don't do that. I had a... Well, no, I had a battle with a couple other guys before that yeah. from West Virginia. So if I didn't take care of them, they were going to take care of me and sort of worked out in her favor that I knew she wasn't going to come after me while I was working that right. situation. So it's it's hard when um, when someone says you should have did this sooner or you should have did that sooner and there's other aspects that affect it and you're not able to do it sooner or else you would have lost on account of something else. Because if I would have left one of the... Um, it was Terry McDaniel and his brother, I believe, or relative, Grimm. And then they had another, it was like a, the, there was two W boys and a Buick. And Terry and the brother came after me right off the rip. They're, I, I, know, I don't know the brother or relative, but I know Terry. He has plenty of experience. Mm-hmm. If I left him alone, he would have got me. And that's just what, it's just hard sometimes. Mm-hmm. But... Anyways, on to the other heats. Uh, you guys didn't really get to see much, but Pete Hansen put on a clinic. We can't forget about twice. we can't forget about Richie Fazenbaker. Oh yeah, Richie. I mean, if anyone was there, my man did not lift. No, no, no. no. And it wasn't no half tracks. They were full sense. That's full, full tracks. tracks. Full sense. You don't care no if you run the tires. He wasn't lifting. And that's that became it seems like part of his driving is anymore is that's just how he drives. It works for him. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. He's always so, there at the end. So a little he, bit, a little bit of oatmeal. Third place. And, <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know if I believe that. I don't either. But, but hey, he third place in Mad Dog, and um, so we moved from the MWFA class. Actually, I should have announced the winner since I was there. Brady Morgan won it. Uh, Todd Hallett. One of the highlights got second. Really? One got second and one got fourth. Oh, nice. Um, it looked like they were going to have it. And Brian's Mansfield ended up getting third in the caravan. The ending was so weird. Uh, Brady Morgan pulls into the corner as Camry shuts off. All three of the top second, third, and fourth cars are running. Chris looks good. Todd looks good. And Brian looks good. Chris's car catches fire. During the fire... I don't know if Todd was losing tranny fluid or what. He lost reverse. Mm-hmm. Brian shuts off. Chris catches fire and is out. So, <laughs> during that red flag, that gives time for Brady Morgan, that was like right there, about probably about to get timed out. He gets his car fired up, goes over and hits Brian Manfield, gives him third, hits Todd Hallett, they, he gets second, and Brady wins. So under a red <laughs> flag, it went from four to one. Went from four to one. Every car. I mean, Todd was still running, but he only had forward and no chance to get through. Up there were too many cars. I mean, it just shows you that sometimes you're never a luck. You're never out. Until don't give out. up. Yeah, you're never out till you're out. So then, my McKee, my heat was McKenna, me, Richie, Richie Mad Dog, um, Ryan Wood got Mad Dog in MWFA. Then they went to the King Class, and um, Pete Hans's wagon is nasty. <laughs> Anything Pete is in is nasty. Yeah. Builds good stuff. I mean, my man, did you watch the video of him talking to the little kid? And that was a fast pace. He. Did you watch him talking to the little kid on Facebook? He oh, was the showing him, Canada kid? Telling him. Yeah, telling that was, him that was, flip that the was, switch. It was cool to, it was cool to watch that. I mean, yeah, catch that. If you yeah. get a lesson from Pete, yeah. listen. And Pete was 100% right. He said, you turn that switch off, but then someone gets on and you turn it on. Get him out, and you got to know to shut that switch off again. Mm-hmm. But Pete definitely knows how to turn it on and off. That's one hundred percent a fact. Yep. So the next heat was uh, the light weld full size, and I believe, man, but every almost every heat I got pulled away right before the end when there was only four or five cars. I know Chris Quinsler won it. I don't know who got second and third. Um, he's always hard to beat. I believe the Steel Brothers. 
I don't know if they got second and third, or one got second and they were all right there at the end. But um, Chris Quimsler won that. Was and it? Did they get third? No, that's in the um, iron class, so I haven't got that far yet. So then the iron class, which was that qualifier for South Dakota, uh, Pete Hansen won it. Cody Riley got second, and William got third. And again, I left. I had to leave when it was down to Pete and Riley, and I don't know how that ending happened. But um, how could you walk away from that? Until tired, soaking yeah. wet, yeah, and trying to get out of there. Yeah. I was trying not to be there all night. It, we were. It was. Um, Soggy bottoms were were there, yeah. In spirit, um, so Pete, Cody, Riley, William, close for the qualifiers out of that heat, and no one separated themselves enough to get the Mad Dog trophy. So the Mad Dog should have been the first fourth person going to South Dakota, and since there was not a Mad Dog, they gave it to the winner of the Light World Class, which was Chris Quinsler. Do you think it was just the track conditions, or was it? Just uh, a little bit of both. Um, by that point, they had scraped the track, and it was pretty decent. I think a lot of guys were driving for the 10,000. Right. I mean, um, I mean, let's be honest. And I'm not saying they were slouching or bagging, and there was some hard hitting, but there was no one that just literally Stood didn't out. give a damn. Right. Um, yeah, I, I I watched it. I can't say that I disagree with their call when I wa- what I watched. That they didn't pick them out. You know what I want to see? I want to see a Andrew Myers in a Pete Hansen car. <laughs> He'd hurt himself. He already hurt himself. <laughs> he would hurt himself bad. So Iron City went well. Um, the next day, we we welcomed a new member to the family. Titan and Mark. Mark, what do you think about Titan? It's too big for a house. <laughs> He's gonna be too big. Yeah, I Almost. didn't know. I didn't know. Understand how big they are. I understand. Like I hear they're big dogs. I scrolled on TikTok the other day. Ain't no way. Yeah, just type in King Corso. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I mean, Steven does got a pretty big house. Now. I don't care how big your house is. He got a big old yard. Yeah. Nope. I'll so, tell you, when he's big, he's gonna jump in a swimming pool and six inches of water's gonna splash out. Plenty of tires to chew on. <laughs> He'll eat a tire. That's yeah, coming. he got plenty of them. Yeah, we'll just give him a junk tires. Get get down, buddy. Use the cords as floss. Mm-hmm. After he kills neighbor's cats. And hopefully this one don't <laughs> bite me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we will. I, I did hear you gotta you gotta stay on them dogs. You gotta bring them around people, or they're gonna. We are. We're yeah. we're bringing them around people. We um have taken them to multiple parties this weekend. He's going on the road with us. Um. Thank you. So he'll be he'll be out and about. He's a very loving dog right now. Both of his parents are pretty good, so we're we're hoping to keep him socialized. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Keep people around him. I think you won't, you won't have a problem. So then uh, we get to this most recent weekend last Saturday. I ran new Alex, and a shout out to Team Revved Up Garage Cast. The three out of the four of us that did run went undefeated undefeated on the weekend, five and zero. Oh. Um, I end up winning the stock compacts and the mod compacts, um, but I am also successfully the first person from Revved Up Garage Cast to junk one of our team cars. <laughs> it could have been fixed. It possibly could have been. It was already cheated. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why, dude, why'd it been in the firewall, bro? Yeah. I, you know what? I had three and a half inch all thread. That did. From the bumper. But I left it a half inch from the firewall just so it could pivot there. So I don't know. I heard we're on the street as you play your whole sub. It's always played. <laughs> That's what I heard. Takes four guys to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I ended up winning a stock class. It was, uh, there was a good bit of cars, but I got lucky. There was only a couple quality cars, I'll say. And not, not knocking the builds of other people, just the level of the cars you have, you have tiers with everything it's mm-hmm. like especially in compacts like the cavies and the mazdas and the this and the that they're not going to compete it's a high level without really driving your ass off compared to the camry's accords and luminous i heard a lot of things about old teddy Byers. so that was in the mod class um 
Justin Giffen was sending it, and he got he got King Lion. But if there was a second vote, it might have even been my first. It was close. Teddy. He sends it back and forth, back and forth. I mean, he only did it a few times because the thing didn't hold in very. It, it, third, it third, held in. It stayed running. Third run on an old PT with a Chrysler pointy on the front of it. That pointy is junk, and the PT is junk now. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to our man Teddy. He just sends it. He I'd don't like care. to. I'd like to get a GoPro in the car and just watch Teddy. <laughs> yeah, he I has a he GoPro. Smiling the whole time. It. I guarantee he smiles all the time. Grinning from ear to ear. Yep. But um, getting ready to get on beam and talk shit. Well, Stephen does that. So yeah. we got down to. Yeah. That compact class at New Alex, though, I'm telling you, it was one of the roughest events I've ever ran from start to finish. Um, just a rowdy heat, and just didn't expect that for a small show. New Alex, mod compacts. Uh, Alex Keaton decided to show up, and that was the biggest challenge. <laughs> he can always be a handful. Yeah, he drives good, built a good car. Um, not scared to hit the skinny pedal. When it got down to it, we both still had pretty darn straight cars. And that was a problem. Yeah. <laughs> he almost got me. And, I mean, I had to use every every ounce of my car, and he used every ounce of his car. And this time the coin fell, followed on tails. Tails never fails. It was probably close. Probably the most, like, bent dubby body in the front I've seen in a long time. Yeah. I mean, she was she was up there. I've seen his bend like that a few yeah. times. Um yeah. they don't the burgers build pretty pretty good ones too, but of course they're they're pretty tight. Right. And then um there's an old gentleman up in New York that a lot of people you guys wouldn't know, but his name is Jerry Ott. And his boys run now. But um he's the first guy I ever got a carb intake off of years ago. And he used to build W bodies and he'd build them to the economy V eight rules. He'd take him in with full size and get him to bed him like that. And he'd, he'd get first, second, third. I mean, he'd be placing with cars that were mm-hmm. clinger caliber cars up there. I mean, like, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I I think a front wheel drive in a full size class is pretty. Yeah, I mean, it's an advantage, but I mean, you have less car, but. It is and it isn't. Um, yeah. Depends on where and how, and the size of the arena. And, I mean, there's a lot of different factors to that but yeah. he was he was good at what he did and getting him to bend and keep running now he was running a carburetor so he didn't have to worry about all the wiring that Alex does but as he said he had a zip ties all in the right place I'd say so like I said I don't know if I don't know if Keaton's car ran that long with a car but he had, I mean that car might have broke I don't know he got out he said he was feeling it I know my seatbelt locked in on me twice. I have a bruise across my waist from my seatbelt. Um, big guy problems, bud. I feel you. <laughs> a big guy, small guy, any guy in yeah. that car was... It was a rough one. Broke my intake off my front window bar, and the car ran wide open for like the last five to eight minutes. Um, I had to keep shutting the car off after I'd hit him. <laughs> Just wait for him to get back to turn towards me, and then I'd fire it back up because I was trying to save the tranny. Ballsy. It was. It ballsy. was very ballsy. I shut ballsy. the car off like four times at the end. Yeah, that's ballsy. It's real ballsy considering before I ran that car, before we ran our first heat at No Mercy, what happened to that car? Yeah. Starter went out. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about, all right, this is a throwback. People might remember it. Burning me. You will probably remember it. You remember, speaking of ballsy, shutting your car off. You remember Blue Ridge Bash, Dakota Bell. First, it was first and second. Remember when he shut his car off when it was like, I'm talking the header was cherry red. It was so hot. And he shut it off, and it fired back up because there was a red flag, and he had no cool, and he shut his car off. And it fired back up, and I said, dude, you're nuts. He ended up winning. And I was like, you're just nuts. And he was like, well, bud, if it ain't going to start up now, it ain't deserved to win. It ain't going to fire up again. So. Yeah, I've Still. always been sort of a believer that, Unless you know something's went wrong to where it's not going to start again. And it actually cost me. So it cost me down at um, Palmetto Destruction. I got hit and my starter wire got hit. And I, it blew the rad and it was sucking coolant. I shut the car off for a minute so it wasn't sucking all that coolant in. 
and my starter wire got hit, so I had nothing when I tried to start it back up. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm not shutting the car off. I can't unless my car like if I if I don't blow a rat or nothing, yeah, if it's just running, but I'll shut it off. But I can't. It's just it scares me. I twisted my wires multiple times in that battle. Yeah, it scares me. Yeah, but it was also scaring me too. Like when I'd go do a lap, I'd get moving and everything was so bent and I could feel stuff catching that like. I was worried I was going to roll myself, so I had to, like, shut it off to just slow my car down. <laughs> and my tranny wasn't, I don't know how it held in. I'm telling you, my my cooler was, couldn't touch it. My lines couldn't touch them. She was, she was toasty. So I heard we got a new uh, points leader. You know, five points leader. New points leader, yes. I do. Well, I don't know if he's new or he was, I think he was, he might have been tied and took the lead now. Okay. I can't remember. But Don Santel has yeah. jumped into a lead. Um, There's a heavy presence last weekend of points drivers at the Proctorville Van Derby. I sort of wish I was there. Um, I've ha- I had luck there last year and success, so it would have been fun. Ain't that where? Two you years ago, that's Santel where I got into it. You mm-hmm. guys ran. No, me and Miller went at it pretty good okay. there. Um, Brandon Kenny was there. Me, where Miller. was it where you and uh, Winger went? Jones. Oh, that was um, that was River City Rampage. Okay. Yeah, so Santel's getting a little bit better and a little bit better in advance. So. Yeah. But what did he do? And that's uh, that's what was real interesting about the point series last weekend. You had two ways to score points, and that was it. So Proctorville, you either ran a van and went one and done, or you ran a uh, window they call it a windshield big car but that's like stock four six creasing like you're allowed to do a little bit those were your only two options mm. Mm. they didn't have a heavy full-size class or a compact class hey, or anything if you're as bad as i say they are you'll adapt so yeah yeah and he mm-hmm. did yeah. in that instance um but had he two uh, local boys got second and third and then the rest of the points guys fell fourth through seventh i believe and i guess where I'm on the street is. Was it Santel and Lorraine in that class? Yeah, uh, Mark Elliott said that Santel hopped on Lorraine fairly right, early. Right off the rip. Fairly early. Got him out, wins the show. Yeah. Doesn't always work like that, though. But yeah. they did in that instance, and he had enough. Um, I don't know if Alex was there or not to record. I would, I'd like to watch that heat. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. Alex at Jay County? He might have been. I think he was at Wherever Jay County. Freebie was. Yeah, Jay County. Damn it, Alex. Why can't you be everywhere? I'm interested <laughs> to see that heat, Freebie's heat, though. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, that car's right, man. That car is nasty. Yeah, he got a really good, well-built car there. I'll tell you this. I saw pictures of Freebie's dad in that car, and I'm like... Freebie's dad wants to be back out there. Just way looking at him, man. That's <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't mind taking it for yeah. a jog. Yeah. Freebie, you ought, to, you ought to let your dad jump in that. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to try to be more consistent. Uh, we owe that to ourselves to give it a better chance and to you guys that do follow and support us. Uh, hope to see you back soon. Episode 7 coming at you. Anything else left to say, Mark? I'd like to get Mark Elliott on here. I'd like to get Mark Elliott on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, just straight go for it. Yeah, but I have um, to give him a... We'll have to either message. figure out the phone call or get him on here when he's in town. Yeah. We are, um, we had some guests before. We are going to be starting to open that avenue back up and try get and get Frank, a few. Get Frankie back on, talk get about his, his shows coming up. Yeah, it's always fun with TJ. We can talk about Buried Alive. Oh, uh, we got, yeah, we can, yeah, that's a good idea. We, no, we can talk about the recap, too. Yeah, we could do we yeah. could do a whole session on how we think some of his ideas are dumb and how how some of them we like. How we're mm-hmm. team dead man. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason. And why our cars don't bend. Cars I, don't bend or cheat. I sent I sent TJ a picture and I said for all the complaining, my car's junk. <laughs> I sent him a picture of the car and he said, "You know what? I was gonna comment on your post, but you can't win on the internet. <laughs> nope. Cannot win on the internet. Never. Sometimes people, it feels like that. A lot of people have just too much time on their hands, pal." Yeah, and sometimes you just got to get in the garage and work for it. That's right. Maybe Mark will take that lesson soon. Or you can go out to your gravel parking lot and work in that. 
That's true. It don't necessarily need to be a garage. That's just, you know what I mean. Oh, did you see that nasty Pontiac Mons I built in my front yard? Huh? I built a nasty That black and yellow checkered car that Lucas Victor got peeled him in. Yeah. Yeah. You should put that thing on the internet. And then I built an Intrepid in my front yard, and John about killed me in it. Yeah, you need to put that video. (laughs) Someone messaged me this week and said, Hey, was it you that just did real good in an Intrepid? (laughs) I said, No. He said, Do you have any tips on how to build one? And I'm like, more just run it in a stock class. So I said, Don't put too much time into it. Yeah, actually, that car held up great for me. It went in limit. Yeah, actually, it held up good. The front end was still straight and everything, but <laughs> still John. Yeah, but we were also it still to ran. be fair, Mark. We also had bumper shocks to our front firewall. Yeah, we did literally up. have them. I wasn't going to bring it up, but it was allowed. Yeah, yeah, they. Ha- oh, wow. oh yeah, they had all that, and I'm running a Pontiac Mons with a stock bumper on the front of it. Well, that's all right. But the Intrepid, you did put tubing in it. Yeah, yeah, and I had a <laughs> old Jens tubing in it. Yeah, I, I think believe. I, had, I had like a Cordova bumper on the front of it or something. I can't remember. But anyways, revved up out. We will see you sooner than later, hopefully. Right. You've been listening to the Revved Up Garage Cast. If it's motorsports and life, we're talking about it. The guys have over 30 years combined experience and a lot of winning. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, you can find us on Facebook at Revved Up Garage Cast. Listen wherever you get your podcast at Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. Y'all be cool. And we'll see you next time on Revved Up Garage Cast.